subject close to my heart is CAR T cell therapy. Um, and so there's a lot of data coming out about the efficacy of CAR T cell therapy and its applicability. We know that it can be effective for those patients who would otherwise be failed by standard chemotherapy, radiotherapy, transplant, etc. And so it's been a big part of what we do to try and see if we can deliver CAR T cell therapy without the need for an additional transplant. Because in many situations, in many studies, CAR T cell therapy is being delivered and then the adjunctive treatment that goes along with that is transplant. Basically, a CAR T cell therapy is a, a T cell, which is part of the immune, immune cells in our body, um, and, and we lasso onto that an antibody recognition domain. Um, but naturally, antibodies, the way that they bind to the molecule of interest, their recognition molecule, they bind at an affinity that's several logs higher than what a T cell would normally experience when it senses antigens through its natural receptor. So we know that we are signaling well above that range. So what we thought was if when selecting an antibody binder for the molecule CD19 that's expressed on ALL, if we can choose an antibody that's got a slightly lower affinity for CD19, we might get a signaling that's a little bit more normal for a T cell and maybe we'll see better responses than we expected. The standard dogma is, is that the lower the affinity, the lower the responsiveness of the CAR T cell that you create or the T cell that you create. But actually, because we've got that buffer of being signaling so way higher than what is natural for a T cell, we felt there might be a sweet spot where if you bring it down a bit but not too far, you'll get additional functional benefits. Um, and that's certainly what we saw in test tubes and in the lab. We saw that when I mean, we took in vivo models and we modelled um, aggressive cancers with lower CAR T cell doses to try and mimic a patient whose leukaemia is really aggressive. Um, and we found that um, our CAR T cells behave better than the standard CAR T cells that are available on licence. Yeah, there are a number of posters looking at um, CAR T cells against different antigens, for example, BAF antigen, lots of groups are looking at that. And that can effectively give you another line of, of interrogation. We've also got the CD19 and 22 by specific CAR T cells, again investigated at UCL, um, as well as other centres such as Stanford. Um, so there have been some exciting presentations about that. In general, the sort of CAR T cell therapies that have targeted both 19 and 22 aren't quite there yet. There's a lot of optimization that needs to be done. And I think most people are going through a second round of studies now where they're really, really trying to finely tune the CD22 CAR to make sure it signals properly. Because I think to date, studies in general have shown a poor persistence, which means that then you can deliver your CAR T cells, but you need to come in with that adjunctive transplant. And the data that was shown um, from the group at Stanford certainly suggested that at least in the paediatric patients, all of them went on to have a transplant. And obviously, if you're trying to save a child the toxicity of a transplant, then that isn't necessarily the best approach. But it's a good start, gets us to understand about what happens when you give pe um, patients CAR T cells against CD22 as well as CD19, and gives us a basis to go forward then and improve things.